In this video, we will review some basic circle vocabulary, like the terms that are shown here at the bottom of the screen. And then later, we will uh, practice the relationships between angles and arcs, depending on whether you're at the center of the circle, um, where the uh, angle equals the arc, if the vertex is on the circle, th which makes the angle half the arc, or you could say the arc is double the angle, if the angle vertex is floating around inside the circle, but not at the center, then uh, we have two arcs, and the angle is equal to arc plus arc divided by two. Or if the angle is outside the circle, then the angle is equal to the big arc minus the small arc divided by two. But first we have the vocabulary. Remember that a radius is a segment that goes from the center of the circle out to the circle itself. A chord is a segment that has both of its endpoints on the circle. A diameter is a chord. You can see that it has both endpoints on the circle, but it's a chord that passes through the center of the circle. A secant is not a segment. It is a line, a line that passes through the interior of the circle. Now, if you have a line that just touches the circle at a single point, that's called a tangent. Um, and uh, there is a such thing as a common tangent if it touches more than one circle, uh, if there are two points of tangency. All right, so let's see how far we can get. All right, hey, I see the terms uh, major arc and minor arc coming up. Um, let me just briefly mention that a minor arc is an arc that is uh, less than 180 degrees. It's less than half the circle. So this would be a minor arc because that's less than 180 degrees. Okay, this arc that I'm showing in green is going to be more than 180 because there's a semicircle right there. The semicircle is exactly 180 degrees. If I kept going, that means that's bigger than a semicircle. So this would be a major arc. So the green is a major arc. The red is a minor arc. Uh, and if I went like this, that is a semicircle, which I see as another vocabulary word. Okay, uh, so now let's go and do a little bit of matching. Okay, so segment EH. Notice the segment symbol over the top of it. Segment EH is a diameter. All right, it's a chord that passes through the center, so that is a diameter. Okay, so I think this is going to be a perfect match, so I think we can cross these out uh, as we go along. Arc CD, arc CD. By the way, if they use two letters, then that automatically means that we're talking about the short way around. So arc CD goes from C to D the short way. Okay, so that is a minor arc. Okay, arc H F E. The three letters tell us which way we have to go. So arc H F E. This is a semicircle. See how it begins and ends on the diameter? All right? That makes this half of a circle a semicircle. Okay, segment BH. Segment BH is right here. That is a radius. It goes from the center out to the edge. That is a radius. Okay, segment CD. Segment CD is right here. That is a chord. 
It begins and ends on the circle um, that is a chord. Um, see, let me cross these out. So we did radius, we've done chord. Line AG, not segment AG, line AG. So line AG passes through A and G and it just keeps on going forever. Um, that is a secant. A line that passes through the interior of a circle is a secant. Arc H E F. Okay, arc H E F. That is a major arc. It is more than half a, a circle. Point C. All right, I see this line of, uh, I see this tangent line right here. So point C must be the point of tangency because it's the point where the tangent touches the circle. So I'm gonna go ahead and cross out point of tangency. Okay. Now, what about line DG? Okay, this is line DG down here. And uh, this is a tangent, all right? It's also, it's actually a common tangent if I wanted to be real specific. But you can see it's touching um, each circle at a single point. So that is a tangent line. Um, point A is clearly the center of the circle. All right. Hmm, what's, what's this now? On the diagram above, draw a secant line that goes through point D. Okay, a secant line that goes through point D might look like this. Uh-oh. All right, there's a secant line through point D. Um, you know, I didn't have to go along this chord that was already drawn. I could have put this uh, secant line anywhere. Well, as long as it went through point D. Okay, I mean, so that would also be a secant line through point D. Um, what else? Draw a ray that is tangent to circle B with a point of tangency at H. Okay, so we want a ray that's tangent at point H. So that would look something like, like this perhaps. All right, moving on. Okay. So now we're getting into this uh, pattern where we have to decide, are we looking at an angle that's at the center, an angle that's on the circle? Maybe I should label these as I go. We have center, we have on the circle, we have in the circle, and we have outside the circle. 
depending on where the vertex is, that tells us which formula to use, which relationship exists. So for example, in this problem, um, all of these angles have their centers, uh, their, the vertices are at the center, okay? And it, in fact, it just plain says central angles right there, uh, which means we're using the relationship that the angles and arcs will be the same. So just keep that in mind. So they tell us that arc SW is 100 degrees. Okay, so arc SW is right here. That arc is 100 degrees. Okay, which by the way means that the angle is also 100 degrees. Arc TV is 90, all right, so here's arc TV, all right, that is 90 degrees, which means that this angle right here is 90 degrees. Okay, what else do we know? We know that um, these two angles WRV and URV are congruent. Uh, we already knew that from the way that they are marked. Okay, these angles are congruent. And of course we have that SU is a diameter. All right, let's figure out what we can. So because of the diameter, all right, we've got this diameter right here. I will try to change the color, make it a little bit more prominent. Okay, that's a diameter. That means uh, this side of the circle uh, on the left is a semicircle. So this has to all up to 180 degrees. But look, um, we have 100 degrees used up right here already. That leaves 80 degrees for these last two. But they are congruent. So that means that specifically they must be 40 and 40. Okay, uh, which means that these arcs are also 40 and 40, like here and here. Okay, that's great. Now, uh, furthermore, that tells me, well, uh, this angle, uh, well, see the arc uh, TV and uh, the, the angle VRT, those are both 90. But now we know that one side of that is 40. So uh, what would it take to make 90? Well, this piece over here would have to be 50. Okay, because that adds up to 90. But now I have another semicircle over here. This is a semicircle. Um, so this has to add up to 180. Well, if this is 50, that means this uh, other part must be 130 because 130 and 50 would make 180 together okay which means that the arc is also 130 okay so now we have enough information to answer any question that they could possibly ask so the measure of arc WV WV is right here that's 40 arc VS. Okay, VS is from here to here. Okay, that's VS. So that's 140. Arc WT. Okay, arc WT goes from here to here. Okay, so um, that's 80 plus 50, which is 130. Okay, a total of 130. Arc STV. S, T, 
look, so far, that's 180. So if I keep going to V, that's 180 plus another 40. Um, so that's 220, all right, 180 plus 40. So that's, whoops, let me get rid of this first. So that's 220 degrees. Arc TSW. Okay, arc T S W. That is 130 plus 100. So that's 230. Angle SRT. All right, angle SRT is this angle right here. Um, that is 130. For number three, part A, the vertex is at the center, so again, the angles and arcs will have the same measure. Um, so that means, for example, that uh, this angle will also be 58 to match. Uh, these are vertical angles. Let me, let me go smaller. Uh, these are vertical angles, so this will also be 58. Um, and again, the, angle, the arc will match the angle, so this arc will also be 58. Uh, now, because of the existence of a diameter here, for example, I, I could have gone the other way, uh, that lets me know that these two angles have to add up to 180. All right, this is a semicircle. So, if I do, hold on, uh, if I do 180, minus 58, that's going to be 122. So that means uh, that this will be 122, and uh, this angle will be 122. And it's the exact same story down here, plus these are vertical angles, so this is 122, this is 122 degrees. So now that we have everything, then I can go back and answer whatever question they want to ask me. For example, the uh, measure of angle AEB, okay, AEB is this angle right here, AEB, uh, that's 122. Okay, angle CED, all right, CED is that angle right there. That is also 122. Okay. Um, next, we have the measure of arc DC. All right, here's arc DC. That is also 122. Okay, now we have the measure of arc DCA. All right, arc DCA is like this. Uh, this is the entire circle except for 58. So I could do 360 minus 58. All right, which is 302. Or I could think of it as a semicircle plus 122. So that could be 180 plus 122. Either way, I get 302. OK. Um, now, skipping over to part B. This vertex is on the circle. And uh, whenever we have a vertex that's on the circle, 
we know that the angle is equal to the arc divided by 2. Okay, so in, that, in this case, that means that um, since the arc is 58, uh, we're going to have to divide that by 2. Um, so that's going to be 29. So the angle will be 29. At the same time, I can notice that I have a diameter right here. So that means I'm looking at a semicircle over here. Um, so I have the 58 as part of it. So the other part, I should be able to subtract from 180. All right, so if I do 180 minus that 58, that's 122. All right, so this part of the circle, this arc, is 122, which I could have gotten from over here as well. All right, so that's this arc right here. Um, all right, and you know, of course, this is a semicircle over here, so we know that this over here is definitely going to be 180. All right, it's a semicircle. So that should allow me to answer anything they want to throw at me. Let's see, let's see how that goes. Um, angle CAB. Well, okay, angle CAB is the 29 right there that we found first. Arc AB. Arc AB is this arc right here. All right, that's 122. Arc CAB. C A B is like that. So I could look at that as um, 180 plus 122. Okay? Um, so that's going to be 302. Okay, just 180 plus 122. All right, um, what about, hold on, should have done this first. Uh, what about arc CBA? Okay, arc CBA is a semicircle. So obviously that's 180. So, um, this is called part C because it's part of problem number three. We did part A and B on the previous video, and now we're on number three, part C. Okay, now, um, this vertex is inside the circle, so the relationship is that the angle will equal arc plus arc divided by 2. So I can find the angle, which I just labeled x, um, by adding these intercepted arcs. So I can do 104 plus 58 divided by 2. So that's 81. All right, so that tells me that this angle is 81 degrees. Now these are vertical angles, so that means both of these angles are 81 degrees. Now I notice that we have a diameter right here. Okay, uh, that goes right through the center of the circle. So that tells me that I have um, a, a semicircle on either side. Okay, so for example, 
over here, I see uh, 104 degrees. Um, but the other part has to add up to 180. So this must be 76 right here because um, 76 plus 4 is 80. So that would be 180. Uh, meanwhile, over here, uh, I can do the same thing. If I do 180 minus 58, uh, I'm going to get 122. So this arc over here must be 122. And again, that's because I'm doing 180 uh, minus 58. Okay, it's a semicircle, they have to add up. So notice that the angle does not equal the arc because it's not at the center. Anyway, now that we've found everything, all of the, well, you know, I guess I didn't find everything yet. Um, let's find out what the angle right next to the 81 is. Um, I'm hoping you can see that what we have here is a linear pair. Okay, um, these angles right next to each other, uh, they form a straight line, so they have to add up to 180. Okay, so if I uh, subtract 81 from 180, okay, that's going to be 99, right? Because uh, 99 plus 81, that would be 180. And uh, right here we have vertical angles, so this is also going to be 99. So now, now I have all the angles and I have all of the arcs. So I should be able to answer whatever question they want to throw at me. Uh, what's the measure of angle A, F, D? Okay, A, A, F, D is this angle right here. That's 81. Okay, angle AFB. All right, that's 99. Okay, arc DC. That's 76. And arc DCB. Okay, not a semicircle, all right? DB is not a diameter. Um, so I need to add 76 and 58. hundred and thirty four. Okay, let's move on to this next one. All right, for this problem, the vertex is outside the circle. Whenever the vertex is outside the circle, we have the following relationship. The angle is going to equal arc minus arc divided by 2. It has to be the big arc minus the small arc. So the angle, all right, I'm just going to call that x for now. Um, so that tells me that x is going to equal the big arc, 136, okay, minus the small arc, 58, divided by 2. Thirty-nine. Okay, so the angle is thirty-nine. So I'm going to go ahead and write that in. Thirty-nine. 
39 degrees. Okay, is there anything else I can find? Uh, well, look at these arcs. I have um, the 136 and the 58 and the 122. That's the whole circle except for this little piece right here, the DC. So there's no reason why I can't go ahead and find DC now. Um, I can find that by starting with the whole circle, 360, and subtracting the three arcs that I am given. So subtract 136, subtract 122, and subtract 58. All right, that leaves me with 44 left. So that means this little arc right here must be 44 degrees. Okay, uh, I think that's everything. So let's see what they're going to ask me. So the measure of angle F. Well, that's the 39 degrees that we found. So it is 30 nine degrees. What about arc DC? Uh, well, that's the 44 degrees we just found. So that's 44 degrees. What about the measure of arc CBD? Okay, arc CBD is this whole big, 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 big thing. That's the entire circle except for 44. So I should be able to do 360 minus 44, and that's going to be 316. Okay, now it's time for arc C, D, B. Okay, C, D, B. Well, that's the entire circle except for 58. So I should be able to do um, 360 minus 58. Um, so that's 302. Boom. All right, guys, that's going to do it for this video. Go ahead and click here in the red apple to watch the next video. Click in the green apple to subscribe or click the yellow apple for the full playlist.